Hello children, welcome back to your 7th standard general science digital class. We continue with lesson number 7, motion, force and work. Let's recall what we studied in the previous video. We studied about motion. The continuous displacement of an object is called motion. Distance is the length of the route actually traversed by a moving body. Displacement is the minimum distance traveled in one direction by the moving body from the original point to reach the final point. We also learned about speed. The distance traversed by a body in unit time is speed. Speed is equal to distance upon time period. We learned about velocity. The distance traversed by a body in a specific direction in unit time is velocity. Velocity is equal to displacement upon period of time. In the previous video, we learned that the interaction that brings about the acceleration is called force. Now let us study about the effects of force. You had learned about the force and its effects in the previous class also. Effects of force on an object. Force can make an object move from rest. Force can stop a moving object. So we also saw that the interaction that brings about acceleration is what is called as force. In these pictures, you can see that the velocity of the moving bodies decreases. This is due to force of friction. Now let's see what is friction. On a carom board, the carom coin pushed by a striker will move forward some distance and then come to a stop. While playing carom, what do you do to make the coin move for a longer time? Yes, we put talcum powder or boric powder before the game so that the coins move smoothly for a longer time. What do we understand from this? The velocity of the coin decreases due to the force of friction and the coin stops. If the friction between the carom board and the coin is reduced, the coin will move for a longer time. This means that if no friction is acting on the body, it will keep on moving with a constant velocity. We know that it is difficult to move a heavier body than a lighter one. Similarly, it is difficult to stop a moving heavier body than a lighter body moving with the same velocity. Thus, we conclude that the mass of the body is the measure of inertia. More the mass, more the inertia. Sir Isaac Newton was the first to study force and the resulting acceleration. Newton's first law of motion states that every body continues to be in the state of rest or of uniform motion unless and until a force acts on it. That is, if a, if a body is stationary, it will remain stationary. If it is in motion, it will continue moving with the same velocity unless it is acted upon by an external force. Now let us study this using some examples. Unless acted upon by an unbalanced force, this golf ball would sit on this tee forever. Unless you strike this ball with a force, it will continue to remain in this state. So it follows from Newton's first law of motion that in the absence of any external force, a body continues to be in a state of rest or of uniform motion along a straight line. This simply means that things cannot start, stop, or change direction all by themselves. Every body will continue to do what it's doing. If it is at rest, it will remain at rest. And if it is in motion, it will stay in motion. But what can change this? Yes, only an unbalanced force can change this. It requires some force acting on them from the outside to cause such a change. Newton's first law of motion is also called the law of inertia. Inertia is the tendency of an object to remain at rest or remain in motion. 
Now let's see what is inertia of rest. Inertia of rest explains why a passenger in a bus fall backward when the bus suddenly starts. Now place a pile of similar carom coins on the table. Use the striker to hit at the bottom of the pile. What do we observe? If we hit strong enough, the bottom coin moves out. Once the lowest coin is removed, the inertia of the other coins makes them stay vertically on the table. Only the carom coin at the bottom of the pile is removed when the fast moving striker hits it. In this picture also the same thing happens when the person is pulling the sheet. Because of the force only the sheet is getting pulled. The glass which is on the table remains at rest. Now this is another experiment to demonstrate inertia. Now here you have a glass tumbler. On the glass tumbler you have a card and a coin on top of the card. Now we are going to flick the card. That is a force is going to act on the card only. Now what will happen to the coin? When you flick the card, the card moves away because of the force acting on it. But the coin which is at rest on the card does not move. It falls into the glass. Let us see this. You can see from the experiment. The card is thrown away because of the force acting on it. But the coin which is at rest on the card remains in place or it falls into the glass. It is not flicked away by the force because the force is acting only on the card. Inertia of motion explains why the passengers fall forward when a fast moving bus suddenly stops. In this case, the lower part of the body comes to rest as soon as the bus stops. But the upper part of the body continues to move forward due to inertia of motion. In these examples, what you see in the picture also, when the vehicles are moving, the body also is moving along with the vehicle. But when the vehicle stops suddenly, the person is thrown out of the vehicle because the body is still in motion. Here you can see a hamster turning on the hamster wheel. Now if no force is acting on the body, its velocity does not change. That is, the body does not accelerate or it continues in this state unless and until a force acts on it to change the situation. So from all the examples that we saw, it is clear that if no force is acting on a body, its velocity does not change. That is, the body does not accelerate. In other words, if the body is stationary, it will remain stationary and if it is in motion, it will continue in motion with the same velocity and in the same direction. Now, this is nothing but Newton's first law of motion. It is also called the law of inertia, which states that an object continues to remain at rest or in a state of uniform motion along a straight line unless an external unbalanced force acts on it. Please note it down in your notebook. Now let's see the unit of force. Suppose you place a 1 kg standard unit on a surface with no friction and pull it with an acceleration of 1 meters per second squared. The force applied here is what is called 1 Newton. Now let's see the relationship between force, displacement and work. In this figure, a string is attached to a wooden block on a table. You can see the wooden block here. A string is attached to it and it is passed over a pulley. On applying sufficient weight, the block will be seen to move. When you increase the weight at this end, the block will start moving forward. Now if the block moves forward, we can say that it has been displaced. Due to the displacement, we say that the force has done some work. We know that work done depends upon force and displacement. 
So we can calculate the work done by force applied to the body multiplied by the displacement. That is W is equal to F into S where F is the force applied to the body and S is the displacement of the body. In the SI system, the unit of work is Joule while the unit of force is Newton. And in CGS system, the unit of work is Erg. Let us understand this better. If a force of 1 Newton parallel to the surface of the table is applied to a wooden block on the table, the block is displaced by 1 meter. Then it can be said that the force has done 1 joule of work. In this example, displacement is in the direction of the force. With this, we come to the end of the lesson. Please read the lesson thoroughly and write down the important points in your notebook. Thank you and have a nice day.